everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Time of Legends Destinies, starring the Joan of Arc world by Mythic Games, and produced also by Lucky Duck Games, a powerful collaboration. It plays one to three players, it takes probably about an hour or so to play, and it's for ages, oh, I would say anybody who can read it up, so well, 10 and up, I suppose. In the game Time of Legends Destinies, you're going to be playing as a character in a feudal landscape in the Joan of Arc universe, trying to achieve your destiny. And each character is going to have their own unique card with a a lot of these QR codes on all the cards in the game, as well as on the back of it, you will have your destiny that you need to accomplish. One might be to slay a werewolf, or to defeat a feudal lord, or maybe attempt to solve a ritual. And if you can achieve that destiny before anybody else in the game, you will win. And of course, you can play it solo as well, just trying to achieve your destiny as quickly as possible, because the days go in turns, and every player will have an opportunity during that day to take a turn. That could involve going into a black Smith and having them make you a weapon, or perhaps praying in a church, or even entering a secluded, dusty basement. You'll be utilizing a bunch of miniatures and boards on the tabletop, as well as this handy dandy app, similar to the game Chronicles of Crime. It's a nice crossover between that and something on an RPG. Anyway, I'll take you down below, I'll show you how the app works, and then I will also show you how to play. So here we have the game Destinies with the Joan of Arc theme, and I went ahead and I'm going to show you this first. This is the app for the game. There is a story prior to this, but to avoid spoilers, I'm just not going to show you that. Instead, we're going to show you the character select screen, in which you can select either the mayor, the herbologist, or the herbalist, I should say, and the deserter. These, you can play one player game, or you can play a two player, or you can play a three player, by suddenly just tapping on these characters here. Additionally, they're telling you what what their specific stats are intelligence dexterity and power and it'll show you like for instance the deserter here has five intelligence and eight uh, and then dexterity has four seven eleven and four and six power let's go ahead and i'll show you the other side of the board and you'll see what i mean over here is basically the entire setup for the game it's just prior to setup uh, except the only difference is I actually included all of the map when normally you're only going to include the main tile you're on and the ones that are adjacent, but to save time and space, I just put them down here. This is going to be the uh, character board you're going to get. You can choose between three different characters, but all the character boards are the same. And like we were saying before, the deserter here, he's got five and he has eight of uh, this intellect here. He's got the four, seven, and eleven uh, dexterity, and then he's got four and six strength. So you'll Set that up for each character based on what the app told you to do. Additionally, you're going to get three small die and two large die in each of these pool areas here. You're going to get two gold as well as each character is going to have a character card and on the back of the card it will have your destiny that you need to achieve to win the game. Here is the board here and I will explain the setup in a second here uh, because it's actually on the app and it tells you how it functions as well as these are all the different characters I have for this specific prototype. The gold, the experience, these uh, trait tokens you gain as you get better and stronger. These are your event markers. These are going to be used for specific things like shops and whatnot. And then your big stack of cards you use that are basically items in the game that you can gain by spending money or specifically by accomplishing certain events. So over here is the character boards. And we're just going to go ahead and select uh, one character so I can show you how it functions and makes it makes it a little easier. So we'll go ahead and just select the herbalist. So I'm going to move these two off and then I'm going to push OK. After I've done that, it's going to tell you to place that tile there. And then it's going to tell you to place that tile there, that one there, that one, and finally that one. Like I showed you before, the adjacent tiles. Then it'll tell you where to place certain miniatures. It will tell you where to place certain events that can be taken place. And then it will tell you that each character is supposed to have their mini on that specific tile. This will then tell you it's your turn, what day it is, and to refresh a die, which means to take a small die and place it back into, into your pool, basically and you're ready to begin. This is your turn, and on your turn, you're going to be able to use this to determine where you want to go, whether you want to move to a certain adjacent space, you can move up to two spaces on a turn, or if you want to uh, check out the inn or the abandoned house or visit the blacksmith. 
as you can see on this board specifically here, I've already went ahead and set up the blacksmith and these two specific locations. And since we're only gonna play, be playing with the herbalist, I'm gonna move these two characters off and just put them on their respective spaces. But if you were to play with them, you'd simply be taking a turn here and then the app would actually tell you whose turn is next and how it all works. And I'm gonna go ahead and select to do, oh, I don't know, let's go to the abandoned house. So we're gonna go ahead and take my character there and I'm gonna take it back to the app over here. So on the app to select the abandoned house, you're going to simply tap it and it'll ask you if you're sure you want to do that and you will say yes. And then after that, it will give you some type of story. And then you're going to get to choose to do one of the two specific things that you want to do in the game. We'll go ahead and open the door and it has a stat. It says red, which is strength, and it has a success that you need to accomplish or successes. So you're going to need to roll dice in order to hopefully break open this door. So this character here, the herbalist, has actually got two specific um, points in their strength, a five and a seven. And whenever the, the herbalist rolls die, they're simply going to be taking these two, and they're always gonna get these two die, but they can additionally use any of the die that are the small ones in their pool as well. But when you use additional die from your pool, you're only gonna get these specific three small ones back when the game tells you to refresh them. So maybe, just maybe, I'm gonna take four die as opposed to all five. And then I'm going to roll to try and break that door open. I got a four, I got a three, and I got two twos. So that's a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we're gonna go ahead and look at this track here and go all the way to eleven, use, utilizing strength, which means this one is a success because eleven is greater than five, and eleven is greater than seven, which means I get two successes. If I had another one that was here, that would give me three successes because I rolled all the way to 11. So you can get a total of 11 successes if all of your spots are filled. Then we're gonna go back to the app and we're going to then select two successes by tapping one and two. And we're going to confirm and see what happens. It'll tell you what happens and it'll tell you what to gain. In this case, it tells you to gain one specific experience. Experience is these little tokens here and you'll place them in your pool as well. These you can spend on your turn to gain specific stat points. One experience will let you put one in any of these spaces here. Two experience will let you place one in these areas, three in these, and four in these. The more experience, the uh, closer to the um, one, two, and three area you can place these specific stats, which can give you successes. And of course, the, the less experience you use, the farther away, which still makes it less likely, right? Uh, as well as when you roll the die, you'll place these two back and you'll set these two small dice on the side. So we've gained that experience and anything else we would normally gain in an event. And we go back to the app. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and simply push okay. And then we can choose to do something else. So maybe she wants to search the coffers and the drawers or stay indoors for the night. We'll go ahead and search as well. Okay, back to uh, rolling for stats. So in this case, I'm gonna get these two die and I'll also take this last one here. I need to get at least an eight for two successes. So I roll three, four, five, and six, which only lets me get one. And I'm gonna take this one off here. So I only get one. Now, another thing to note is sometimes you'll roll this specific number, which is actually a success symbol, in which case you can get additional successes, even though they're not on the board here. But in this case, that didn't happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one success on the app. So I went and placed one success, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push confirm and see what I gain. In this case, it tells me I gain specifically one gold coin and one more experience, in which case I would place it on my player board, push okay, and then choose to do my last action. It'll have a story event, which you can go ahead and read, and then your turn will end and you'll pass it to the next player. Unless you're playing with one player, in which case you will keep going and the story will unfold as each day progresses. Then it tells you to refresh a die. So we'd come back over here, we place one die back on the space here. We've got our experience as well as our gold. Perhaps we even spent these two experience to place one of these on, oh, I don't know, maybe she likes to do intelligence. And we have our gold to buy stuff as well. In which case, now we're on to the next turn and we're just simply using this character here. We've been here before, so we don't need to go here anymore. We can leave that there, especially if it's still there on the map, but sometimes it will tell us to remove these things. And maybe we'll move to an extra space and I'll show you how that works on the app. So we'll push this button here and then we're gonna go ahead and choose to move to the next space in which case you push yes and then it tells you which card to flip over and which cards to place a, uh, on top of the space as well as adjacently to the space and this one here it says the town hall and uh, we're also gonna be placing a uh, character on the church area so I'm gonna go ahead and take it over here so now we're gonna go ahead and flip this over 
and we're going to go ahead and place our character on the space here. We're going to add one to the town hall. We're going to add the preacher to the church over here. And then we can go ahead and go back to the app and choose a thing that we may or may not want to do. And I'll show you this one more event here just to show you some more stuff. So we'll go ahead and go to the uh, church here. We'll tap this and go to the church. And then it tells us what we can do. We can ask about, ask the priest about something or we can go ahead and participate in Holy Mass. We'll do that. That lets me refresh all my die. So I can then take all the extra die that I had used previously and put them back into my pool, which then allows me to utilize them more for specific different events and actions that will take place on, on turns that are consecutive to this one. Push this button there and then maybe ask the priest about certain things. I could then choose a specific item. So for instance, if I, if I have herbs here, I could go ahead and take it down and I would actually use it. Let's see if I can find this thing here on this little thing here. And I can actually use this specific QR code which would then allow me to uh, let the, the preacher, the, the, ask the pre, pre, priest or preacher or whatever about this. Um, I'm not, it's too dark, but you'll get the idea. So there's a bunch of different items specifically. So over here, as you can see, these are all cards with QR codes, which will allow you to ask certain things from different people. And of course, there's gonna be shops that open up as well throughout the game that will let you buy certain things, the cost of the cards on the top right, uh, what can happen when you discard it, as well as specifically certain uh, bonuses you can get at the bottom of the cards here and that will allow you to put more points into your stats and whatnot as well as the ability to successfully accomplish your goals in the game uh, Destiny uh, <laughs> Time of Legends. So that's pretty much the basic idea of this game. I don't want to give away too many specific plot points and whatnot because it's a lot of fun even the tutorial itself but I think you get the idea. You'll be able to go throughout the different portions of the map unlocking new areas, attempting to fight certain things like perhaps a great swordsman or maybe a chicken turning into an angel or perhaps even a werewolf popping out of a cave and having to deal with that. And if you can accomplish your destiny before anybody else, you're going to win this specifically fun and interesting game that I do not see a lot of. It's a nice combination of games that will come up now and we'll discuss it and tell you guys what I think about Time of Legends Destinies. So let's talk about Time of Legends Destinies and what I think of this game. But just before that, let's actually talk about Chronicles of Crime and Mythic Games and what they make. So this is a merger of two amazing companies. I am a huge fan of Mythic Games and a huge fan of Lucky Duck Games as well. Chronicles of Crime was one of my favorite games last year. It did everything right that a co-op should do with a beautiful story, a narrative, and a sense of puzzle, like questions, you never know what's going on in that game and it's always throwing you through a loop. And they brought that game to this. But not only that, they also brought miniatures and the ability to move around the board and do kind of what you want without having other players also decide with you. Cooperative games are a lot of fun, but having to choose your own destiny and allow you to go along the path that you so choose to try and do the, the best possible path for you to succeed in your goal is so unique and so interesting. Uh, this game specifically is a it's a blessing to play. It is a wonderful game. If you are interested in an RPG type game, but you have less imagination, or you simply want to be able to move around and interact with somebody else's story, this is going to do that for you. You're gonna have the options of going anywhere you kind of wanna go in this sandbox-like game. And just the tutorial alone was so much fun. I, 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 it's funny because I had to try and weigh this to Chronicles of Crime because they're similar in nature as far as utilizing the QR codes and utilizing an app with a board game, but it's also fundamentally different in a lot of ways. The cooperative and competitive nature does change the game quite a bit. The fact that you're now using stats for your character and moving them around the board separately and things that you do in the game will affect other players. If you destroy a character or another another NPC, that's gone and now that player can't interact with that player in some way. Or the fact that you've gone through a specific town and gathered this specific item or not, it's probably not gonna be there. Or if you buy something from a shopkeeper, all of that plays a role in how somebody else's story is going to be told. I'm very excited to see what they come up with this game because right now I just have a little little taste. I got to play for maybe 45 minutes with each of the different characters because that's what the tutorial gives you, but it's so unique and so interesting. If I had to choose between Chronicles of Crime and this one specifically, it would be a really hard decision, but I think specifically because this has a fantasy setting, which I love, it has the miniatures and the fact that it has a board that you're moving around that gives you that little bit of RPG feel, which is kind of where I'm at. I'm not too far when I like to do RPs, but I'm also not 
uh, to the point where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do storytelling games. This is exactly the type of game I specifically want to play. And because of that, this is likely going to be one of my favorite games this year, if not specifically my favorite because of how it works. Uh, the miniatures are beautiful. This specific prototype is so well done, and I am so excited to see all the different miniatures and whatnot. I'm backing this game. The moment it pops up, it is going to be in my in my cart. I, I, I really, really like this game. I want everything for it, because I think anybody will want to play this game. It has so much for it. I have to think of negatives for it and it's really hard to do so but if you're not somebody who likes a storytelling game you're probably not going to like this and if you don't like games that you are specifically moving off into your own path and you don't have as much interaction with other players other than what you do to the world with that whole butterfly effect thing then maybe it's not going to be your cup of tea but for those of you who love story driven games with miniatures and a ever moving board you're going to really enjoy this I guess my only real little qualm, which is not really a qualm, is basically when you start the game off, you're placing down the p the board and whatnot, and you're going to be flipping them over from the Fog of War side, as we uh, RTS players like to call it, to the main portion of the board, and that can be, I guess, a little tedious. I actually like to play it where all of the pieces are just there um, and the map is revealed, but I guess that kind of does give things away, so most players probably won't want to do that, but it makes the turning of all the little things over uh, a little less, uh, less finicky for me specifically, but... Ha, huh, I like this game. I, I think if you like Chronicles of Crime, this is a must buy. Like you will not regret it. If you like Chronicles of Crime and you want a game that's just the competitive variant of that with story driven, beautiful miniatures, uh, you're going to like this game. I, I, I could keep talking about this game, honestly, if I really wanted to, because I just like all the different aspects of it. But I think you get the idea of it. I showed you how the app functions. And if you even played Chronicles of Crime, you know how the QR codes work. And it works very well. There's a couple of little bugs for the single player variant, but apparently I wasn't supposed to do that. So there's just like little things they're fixing throughout it. But it, it's at the point where it needs to be, in my opinion, for where it's coming to Kickstarter. Definitely buy Chronicles or yeah, buy Chronicles of Crime and buy Time of Destiny, Time of Legends, Destinies, the Joan of Arc adventure. The only thing they can do better with this game is make it Solomon Kane. Do that next. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Seal of approval. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a given, but seal of approval for this game. It, get the game. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Uh, I'm sure by this point of you watching this, it's already funded. That's that's how unsurprised I'd be if it's the first hour of the campaign. <sighs> okay, I need to stop talking about this game. I just really like it, all right? As well as checking out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. There's blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have a live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. And we give away games, and we play games just like this one. In fact, we're probably going to be playing this one at some point throughout the campaign. To show you guys what the game is like, we give away games specifically on uh, the live stream. Games like this. Maybe not this one specifically, but games like this. And if you like that and you want to build a sense of community with us, we are happy to have you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to spending times of legends with you destinies do that right grant yeah. nice <laughs>